Hello, having discussed various different threats to systems, it's now time, I reckon, to start talking about how we can prevent or lessen the impact of these threats. We'll look at this in this video and the next video about how we can use different user access restrictions. This video is on physical ones, next video will be on logical ones. But generally, let's talk about what is meant by a cybersecurity measure. So we're now trying to protect some weakness from being exploited, trying to stop a threat having a major impact. In the first security video, I talked about the fact that you know, an example of some cybersecurity might be you having a firewall, which is stopping a hacker managing to access your server. And so the firewall here would be our measure, what we are putting in place to try and reduce the impact or risk of that attack happening. Now, what's important to say is some measures we put into place will be more effective than other measures. Some might not even work, but even if we have a really effective security measure, the threat will still exist the attacker is not going anywhere, but they may be put off enough or it may be too hard for them. So the attack might never happen. Or if it does happen, if the attacker can still manage to break through your measure, it might just have a smaller impact. Maybe they can access fewer tables in your database. So the name for this entire process is called risk mitigation. There is a risk that we could be attacked because we have different security threats. And we're trying to mitigate against these risks. Mitigation as a word is really reducing something. So if I'm mitigating against these risks, I'm choosing to put in different security measures. I'll do things like risk assessments to determine which security measure is best. You know, is a really expensive firewall going to make enough difference to be worth all that money? Those sort of decisions are done all the time. Thankfully, not something we really have to do ourselves at the moment, but we are going to learn about a few different security measures which could be chosen over each other or used as a combination. So first of all, this video and next video are looking specifically at user access restrictions, which are measures we put in place which limit who is able to access our systems. Bear in mind by systems we mean both hardware or software, right? So or and software. So we've both got our physical systems and also the software running on them. So looking now at physical restrictions, these restrictions are measures which are protecting the surroundings of a system. So they're really focused on stopping unauthorized users accessing our hardware, right? You don't want somebody just walking into your office, walking into your school and being able to access all the laptops, all the data, that's just stupid. You want to have physical protections as well as logical ones, which will be covered in the next video. So physical protections are things like having locks on doors. Maybe you've got a swipe card to access your door instead. Maybe you've got a metal detector in your reception so if everybody coming into your building has to see what they've got. I've seen these used a lot in data centers where the security team will have these detectors often to try and spot if somebody is carrying out a storage device. Maybe they've smuggled out a hard drive and hopefully it'll get spotted when we go through this detector. Also don't underestimate actually having a security team, having security guards walking around, speaking to people, checking people's lanyards to see if they are who they say they are really important. And also making sure that you have not just locks on doors, but also maybe a safe where you can put sensitive information. Maybe you've got a hard drive with loads of really important information on it. Put it in a safe overnight in case somebody breaks in and manages to take it. So these are the sort of things which just fall under physical security, as well as things like walls and fences and barbed wire. Those sort of things sound quite obvious and don't sound very IT related, but they are really important for having this security around your buildings, around your servers. A related concept to this, which can also apply to non-physical security, but is often embedded into different physical restrictions, are biometrics or use of biometrics at least. So biometrics refers to distinctive and measurable human characteristics. So things like our fingerprints. So a fingerprint scanner might be, first of all, registering everybody who is on site and also enables tracking, maybe only authorized employees have got a fingerprint stored on the system and so going in in the morning you put your your uh, fingers on this scanner and it makes sure you are who you say you are because all of us have got unique fingerprints right that's what it means by distinctive they are unique not always perfectly unique for example facial recognition like a face id on an iphone is not perfectly your face is not perfectly unique especially if you've got a twin but it is a distinctive measurable characteristic we can scan somebody's face, scan somebody's fingers. Another example is an eye. So your iris, the colored part of your eye is unique. Even if you've got what looks to be black eyes or brown eyes, they are distinct under certain light. 
And so like a fingerprint, they are very distinctive and can be used in fancy scanners to see if you are who you say you are. The idea being that the system, the door, the security guard is able to either give you access, grant you access, or deny you access, say no to you, depending on whether you are meant to be there or not. Because biometrics allow authentication. Authentication is a really important concept in security. It's all about checking to see if somebody is who they say they are. It's very easy to walk in, you know, it's very easy to steal a key to a door and just walk in and unlock it. But it's much harder to mimic somebody's fingerprint or mimic somebody's eyeball so much harder because they are human characteristics and are pretty much unique to individuals much much harder to do and even fancy scanners will be able to detect if your eyeball if your finger is alive so that the attacker can't cut off somebody's finger and use that instead really sophisticated they can detect a pulse so that's the sort of lengths people go to to protect their buildings using biometrics like this